Okay, morning everybody. Uh, Bank Holiday Monday, the 27th of May. Right, this is it. Here we go. A70 Lightning. Engine, part one. So let's get set up and firstly just take stock of what we've got. So I think the best way to, uh, to begin is, is from the top down. What I've got under here is the main engine itself minus barrels and head. Uh, that's over there. When I first came across this bike, which is as in the photograph as part of my uh, introduction set to each of my videos at the moment, then the engine was in the frame and the engine appeared to be relatively complete. The barrels and the head were on the cases, however the head was only held on by a couple of studs and nuts and it was described to me that the engine is complete except for the left hand rod and piston. So what I did before I purchased the bike was that we uh, we did some uh, investigation of what was there and indeed um, the company that was selling it um, was correct in that firstly the crank was present which is all important obviously on the A70 because that's the uh, may, probably the major distinguishing factor and, and gives the 750 um, its capacity because of the longer stroke. Um, so that was important. The second thing was that there was only one uh, piston and con rod with right hand one. Um, however, although as is usual with these twins, in certain circumstances they've got a habit of throwing the left hand rod, usually due to uh, lack of oil feed to the left hand uh, big end journal. Uh, luckily, in this case, something has happened to the left hand rod, but it's not uh, broken it and thrown the two halves through the crankcase, which is which actually is very good news. So that's as we've got it. Uh, uh, sorry, as we as we bought it. When I was um, stripping down the rolling chassis and took the engine out. Before I took the engine out, I did remove the, the head and the barrels, um, obviously to facilitate the uh, crankcase removal from the frame. And that's why they're separated now, because, because I took them away. So what we've got is, we've got the rocker box cover. Uh, this has been chrome plated in the past, and that's in line with a number of other items that we found on the bike that have been chrome plated, including rear engine plates, which are still on the uh, crankcases here, uh, swinging arm, uh, top um, top fork yoke, and one or two other bits and pieces. And this was consistent with the fact that this bike had been attempted to be sort of semi chopperized. Um, I think, as I've already indicated in some previous earlier video videos of restoring the frame etc then the frame has been messed about with in a little uh, in a little way to accommodate probably a peanut tank or something like that um, the rear shocks have been shortened just by putting shorter springs in or hacking the springs that were in them originally and, and most of um, you know those shall we say attributes have been addressed now in the rolling chassis build um, and in some ways I don't mind keeping you know a bit of history of, of this bike um, so in the case of this rocker box cover then it's chrome plated and I wouldn't have minded putting it on except that the chrome is now in poor condition and is very very badly pitted and secondly you can see there that these front fins, for some reason, have been ground off. And I don't know why. 
it wasn't apparent when I bought the bike. There was nothing that had been fitted um, that would um, suggest that you know any additional clearance was was required with the uh, the engine rocker box. So, with respect to this, then I purchased a replacement. So I've purchased a reasonably good replacement. It's it's got some aberrations on the fins, but all the fins are there and relatively complete. It has been blasted, probably um, either aqua blasted or or ultrasonically clean. It's not been bleed blasted. Um, but what you've got to remember with these is this is uh, we're talking about oil in frame here. So they for the oil, oil in frame mo models they significantly altered the uh, the head study mountings and that's why you have to have this type of rocker box to which the uh, head study attaches with the uh, the two uh, mounting holes with uh, that are threaded and these threads uh, are in very good uh, condition too um, the earlier motors had a big lug, lug on the front of the uh, cylinder head <laughs> and I've just noticed something that we'll come back to in a minute uh, because I've just found what might be another problem. So, from the top down, that's just the first part. Second part, uh, cylinder head. The cylinder head is in one piece. And again, I've actually inserted it onto the two remaining studs that are screwed into the barrel. So give me a give me a second, and I'll uh, I'll remove that. Uh, I'll just put it back on there for safekeeping. So one second, I'll be back, and we'll have a look at the head. Right, that's got the head off. So what we've got here is the head that came with it and it's in one piece the valves and the domes look okay the, the valves aren't pocketed um, it's been running very rich but that looks okay however the biggest problem with this is that it's had led a hard life and there's you know at least what well, two big fins missing there I don't have them um, the fins on this side have been bashed around so they're going to be brittle too so that's going to be difficult to repair not impossible but difficult now what I was going to say um, just recently is that they changed the head study uh, on the oil in frame ones uh, the original um, motors pre-oil in frame had the head study attached to a lug on the front of the cylinder head and there it is there now I thought they'd removed that for the later heads and the reason why I was umming and ahhing just now is because the bike came with a spare cylinder head with all its fins and that cylinder head has got this um, original mountain lug for the head study on it as well so what I'm going to do first is let's have a look at the parts book and um, just have a quick look to see what the, uh, the picture in there looks like see if we get any clues now as, as I've said before this part book is is 72 as you can see 650 and 750 twins so um, it is different um, but only to the extent that it's got the additional page one page for the 750 twin within it whereas originally the one page for the 750 twin when it first came out or was first mooted it was a, a separate appendix which I've also got too 
Right, let's have a quick look at the head, which uh, obviously the first in the first picture. And uh, lo and behold, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this. The uh, picture of the cylinder head um, has the original head study mounting lug retained. So that's correct. Okay, um, that's one potential headache sorted. So what it does mean is that the spare head that came with the bike uh, will be used. Um, again, it's got all its, it's got most of its um, uh, paraphernalia mounted up, except for uh, the front rocker and rocker spindle, but that's no sweat. But again, uh, in the in the domes, then this engine. Oh dear, I've just noticed two fins missing on the underside. Hmm. Anyway, what I was going to say, this engine has definitely been running better. Uh, it's a better colour and the valves actually are a bit prouder. But I've just noticed these two chipped fins. Now what we could do... is use a couple of fins off the other head because this is going to be easier to repair than the other one and other than that it's a bit corroded etc but it's not bad other than that they're all present and it's just on the front there front right it's been clouded at some point Hmm. Okay, well I hadn't noticed that before, but that's what this is all about. So, that's the head, or heads. Next down, barrels. Right. This is good news. So these barrels, externally, good condition, a lot of paint on, not rusted, no fins missing or chipped, great news. Internally, bits gummed up, but no scores, and more importantly, there's no ridge on the bottom or towards the bottom of this barrel. I think this barrel is in pretty good nick and I think this demonstrates again in line with some of the findings on the rolling chassis. I think this bike's led a pretty hard life but hasn't done a lot of miles. But the barrels I think are good. So the plan at the moment is, um, well, well we'll check but I'm pretty sure I've already checked that this is still on standard. I've got brand new standard pistons and rings. I've got plus 40s too. But I've got brand new standard piston and rings. So I'm planning at the moment to re-hone this. Just to hone it. Uh, glaze bust it. And then we'll put new standard pistons and rings in. And that's going to be pretty good news I think. So, barrel, good news. Okay, let's remove the rag. And there you have the lump in a bit of a sorry state, um, covered in oil and muck. Um, it's obviously been leaking somewhere in the past. Um, but main thing is, firstly, Got the right hand piston, no rings in it, so obviously this the head and barrels have obviously been off this, uh, and that's why there were there was hardly anything securing them down, which is fair enough. Somebody's had a look in here with a view to restoring it, and probably several people have over years and years, uh, because we know when the bike was reimported, and we know when it was last on the road. 
in North America. And um, if you look at various records, including the Burton Bike Bits A70 register, it's in there as being down in, in Essex, semi-chopperized in the past and undergoing restoration. Well, that ne restoration never began. And I didn't buy it from the owner in Essex, so it's changed hands since that uh, entry was made in the register. Um, so this poor bike has been around from pillar to post, probably looking for uh, someone that will actually begin the restoration rather than buy it in and uh, think about it. Um, the left hand journal, I can see, it's, uh, it's scored. It might not be that bad, however, I'm, I'm liaising with uh, a company that knows these twins very well. Um, we've got uh, big end bearings up to about minus 40, I think. And also, if the journal is bad such that it will need more than that grinding off it to get a good surface, um, we can, they don't metal spray, but there's some of the technique that they use to, to build up the journal again and then grind it back. So, although, you know, the crank is displaying probably the usual signs of a, an A65 with the left rod terminal decline, um, we can resurrect it, which is good news because um, these cranks are scarce. I've seen them occasionally, one or two. I've seen one that's come up on um, eBay in the last eight months, last year it was. Um, but it was uh, bundled with other parts, including an A70 frame. Um, but it, it was going for thousands, um, so that just wasn't worth it. But, um, as I say, they are about in scarce uh, numbers. So other things to note while uh, before we start getting into this. First thing is uh, the rear engine plates at the back here, just see them there, they've, they've been chromed. Um, the chrome looks in pretty good nick, if that's the case I'm, I'm going to keep it. Um, I'm, I'm all for having little hints left on the bike of, of its history um, and that's part of its history and it was done a long while ago but luckily the engine's been leaking oil all over it, the chrome, and the chrome is, is very good on these plates I think, unlike the rocker box cover and uh, on the swinging arm it was flaking off um, it was terrible so I had to get that grip, all grip blasted off before we then applied the paint. If, if the swinging arm chrome again had been good I'd, I'd have left it actually uh, but it wasn't so um, it's uh, it's all good just looking at the, uh, the rolling chassis on the other side and uh, yeah we've had some ups and downs with that and pattern bloody parts um, but actually, yeah, looking good. Right, um, not, don't get distracted. Um, anything else to note? Yes, other thing to note. On the front of the engine, another item that is unique to this engine is the oil pressure valve. Um, that's down here, and it's there attached. So that's good. We wanted that. The... Primary case, um, haven't uh, had this off yet, so don't know what's on in here, but um, it doesn't look particularly encouraging. Uh, firstly, there are original Phillips crossheads, but they're not in very good condition. But there are some flatheads on here as well, which are incorrect. So that's been off at some point. And one of the first jobs we'll do with this is uh, check to see if there's any oil in it and uh, drain that out and see what's in there. The good news again is because the left hand rod didn't destroy the cases, then we've got the all important saved engine number matching the frame. Uh, fantastic. Uh, and then the final thing just to note then on this is um, to have a look at the piston uh, piston number 
Um, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I have investigated this already. Um, let's see. Grab a bit of wire wool. I mean, this piston's had it, so... Uh, There's the number. Looks like seven one slash two treble six. So in the seventy one, seventy two, six hundred and seven fifty twins parts book, if you haven't seen it before, there's one page on the A70 and it basically says except for the following all other items as are are as per A65 so if we look at the pistons yeah the, the, uh, the part numbers don't tally So that might be a casting number. Let me have a think. And sometimes they're complete um, part numbers as well. So we might have to measure up. Let's just check that again. Let's get a bit of light on it. Seven one slash two treble six. And there are some seven one slash two six part numbers on this page. Can't be the um, a65, can they? No, they're 6 eights. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I've heard of uh, some anomaly regarding the fact that there might, there's a, might be a different part number between the piston itself and then pistons that come um, complete with uh, rings, gudge, and pin and circuits, etc. Uh, but anyway, we, we can measure those up with uh, vernies, etc. anyway, to, to check all that out and, and compare it with the standard pistons that I've got. And uh, th these pistons are unique to the A70 because the throw of the crank is longer then the gudgeon pin position has changed to be higher up I believe it is in the piston um, so the piston doesn't plow out the head so these are not A65 pistons but they are the same size bore so uh, that's something to bear in mind. Okay. Right. Um, finally, then, timing side. The cover I took off earlier just to see what was in here. Uh, earlier being when I got the motor. And um, it, it's it was. Uh, mounted up with uh, Allen keys, so that's uh, that's been off before. Um, you can see there's an awful lot of muck and stuff that's got in here. The auto advance is here, uh, but in pretty poor condition and uh, seized. Uh, what the reason I took this this off was to see if there were any points, and and there weren't. So I've, I've sourced a, a set of um, points and back plate. Um, a story from another another day is that. Um, I've had some poor experiences with electronic uh, ignition systems that have overheated and uh, actually left me stranded at the side of the road. So um, in, in the Rocket 3, for instance, I've gone back to uh, to points and um, and standard set up there, points and cadences. haven't had any trouble since. Um, I ran a Hurricane for 18 years on its original points 
Uh, just got to be very stringent when you uh, time up and definitely use a strobe, etc. Make sure the points are clean. I serviced regularly, but never had a problem. And I've never had a problem with the Rocket 3 since I put points in. Uh, so points are going in this. Uh, I mean, with the sort of mileage we're doing anyway, it's um, it, it'll be fine. After all, it's, it's what the factory race is used. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so that's that. Um, the other thing to note is that the uh, the points access cover is plain and chromed, but very badly scratched. Don't know where that's been, which is wrong. But I've got a replacement one uh, with the BSA logo on it, which is correct. So that's it. That's what we have. And so the first jobs are going to be uh, to remove the uh, inner timing case and also the, the primary case. So um, I'll get set up here and we'll start draining any oil out of the primary case. Um, grab the impact driver, etc. And uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll grab a cup of coffee and we'll, uh, we'll start taking apart. Should be interesting. Right, first thing I'm going to do is see if there's any oil in the primary case. Um, so I've got the engine uh, just sat close to the side of the bench, but still very secure. No worries about that. I've got the impact driver set to uh, set to undo. Uh, now, if I remember rightly, um, with these cases, one of the um, usual um, mounting screws uh, along the bottom acts as a drain, but I don't know whether this is original or not, and again we'll have a look in the parts book in a minute, but there's a separate tap screw in this as well, which looks like a drain. So we'll have a go at both of these. Two. Just needed a bigger hammer. Okay. Okay, we've got oil. Uh, and it looks like uh, ATF. It's red. Uh, that's okay. Um, that is an option on these primary cases. Uh, so on these models, if you like the early ones, the case is totally separate. It's not topped up, topped up by the engine like it is in the uh, the triples, uh, and actually like it is in the Fury and Bandit too. Um, so that's good. So 
So we'll put the uh, bowl down. And what we'll also do then is we'll open up the top if we can. There she goes. A little bit of air in. Separate container for all the parts. Okay, um, just filling in there, there is a primary chain which is the uh, which will be triplex on this. So what we'll do is that that I've undone there is definitely a, a drain screw, it doesn't go through into the uh, crankcase. Probably the other one that I've just undone, which is a bit further up, is probably the level screw. Um, I'm not familiar with these later motors. My first uh, British bike was um, an A65, 1968 A65. And in that, you um, say a couple of the mounting screws for the cover uh, doubled up as both the level screw and the, the drain screw, too. Um, on this, they're separate, and that would make sense, actually with respect to level screw and drain screw, so that's worked, and they're original, they're in poor condition. <coughs> but they're the original ones, probably. Anyway, we'll be able to uh, to get some new ones. If the crossheads weren't in such poor condition, I'd reuse them. Anyway, let's see, let's see. Um, while that's draining then, We'll let's see if we can get the uh, alternator or timing cover off. Oil still draining out. It's um, not too bad a cover. It is a bit black, but uh, I've seen a lot worse. With uh, my original Lighting 68 Lightning, which is the first British bike I had, uh, which I used to ride around on in 76, I think it was, uh, I broke down on that uh, going across the M62 to, uh, to university one weekend, and that was because the... Uh, primary case had run out of oil and so it shredded the uh, chain tensioner and um, the, the chain, the primary chain jumped the, um, the, I think it was the clutch sprocket and jammed between the uh, teeth and the uh, crankcase cover so it appeared as though um, the motor had seized. This was trying to, when I was trying to fire it up after stopping at some services so it wasn't dangerous. Um, but yeah, it was quite a relief when I uh, took the engine apart and it was just uh, the problem with uh, the primary case and nothing else fundamentally with the engine. Right, let's put those three screws out. Let's just see if we can gently lever this out and see if we've got an alternator. Oh my god, right. I don't know if you can see that. That's all gasket goo. Absolutely mountains of it. I think they had a oil leak problem. In general though the uh, the cover, the external surface of the cover is uh, is good with the logo. So I think the cover's fine. They just didn't obviously have an original gasket. Rotor's in there okay, uh, the rotor nut's there and it's got a tab washer on it. And we've also still got the pointer for timing, got the timing marks on it. Yeah, 
Interestingly, the rotor has got stamps on it, date stamps. That to me says, oh yeah, three. I thought it said nine, but it's not. The date stamp is 371 for the rotor. And that's about right. This bike was built um, June, July. So that marries up. Okay, that's good. Right, it's just beginning finishing dripping oil. Next, a look, look at the, uh, the clutch centre. This looks a bit um, corroded. It's going to work actually. It is moving. It's moving. she goes. Okay, still a still a rubber oil seal in that one. Didn't check the other one actually. Yeah there is. Yeah. And there's the uh, clutch adjustment, and that's in pretty good condition. The nut and the centre screw, that's fine. Okay, so what we'll begin to do is uh, see if we can get some of these other screws undone. Oil's just about finished draining. Sorry it's in this position where you can't see in detail, but I need to drain that oil off. Right, I think we're going to have some fun and games with a lot of these. They're in very poor condition. Oh, that one's loose. Right. To start. Okay, that's another one gone. Yep. Very rounded. God. That one's in a hell of a state. Some of these are flats, which are wrong, but loose. Uh, the primary cake shaking case cover itself is uh, has got some surface corrosion, but it'll clean up fine. It'll polish up all right. No deep scratches. Uh, ooh. One little tiny dent I've just seen.
to tighten. I might need to uh, to get the impact hammer on this one and some of these. Let's get it out. that one Right, the problem we've got now is that um, we've got the majority of them out, but there's some, a couple of stubborn ones, and I might have to uh, ch ch to uh, chisel them. Just thinking what else I can uh, try. Um, of course, I can drill. That's an option. Because that will at least enable us to get the case off, and then obviously we can extract what's left of the uh, of the screw. I am going to have another go at this one.
Right, let me have a go at uh, drilling, I think, and then I'll uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, so this is what we want to end up with. That's a drilled crosshead. The head has, has come off. There's the head that we've drilled through and then tapped off. Um, so this, the case now should slide over that and once the case is off, it's just a case then of uh, clamping something onto that and, uh, and unscrewing it. So we'll do that uh, to the other three. I have got some um, left hand drill bits too, um, which are quite handy. Sometimes as you're drilling away, if there's enough force, you can actually um, encourage a screw to unscrew. So I, I do use those too. So I'll get on with the other three and I'll bring you back once those are done. Okay, right, we've made, uh, we've made more progress. So this one is drilled. So the head's off that. That one we've managed to remove. One of these Others we've managed to remove as well, but we've got three down the bottom here, which are as stubborn as hell. Um, impact electrical um, driver has uh, no effect, so we're going to have to drill those. Um, so I'm, I'm going to get on with that um, on the next video, I think. And so we'll, what we'll probably do is leave it there by way of an intro. What have we got and where are we going to start? And um, in the next video then, what we'll aim to do is to get this primary cover off uh, and also the inner timing case as well. And then we'll be on our way to getting the gearbox out and uh, splitting the cases. won't take uh, too long. Uh, so thanks very much for watching everybody. Um, we're, off, we're off with the engine, which is good news. We'll crack on and I'll see you again soon so we can carry on. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers everybody.